This two-minute teacher's guide starts now. Graphs of quadratic functions. The graph of a quadratic function is a special curve called a parabola. A common student stumble is that after students learn parabolas are U-shaped, they mistakenly believe any U-shaped curve is a parabola. 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 This is kind of tricky because, yes, parabolas vary quite a bit. They can be narrow or wide, concave up or concave down. They can even be askew if you define them with a focus and directrix. But, nevertheless, parabolas are a special U-shape. And there are lots of other U-shapes that are not parabolas, such as higher degree polynomials, catenary curves, or the letter U itself. So let's try to keep parabolas special, shall we? By letting students know about these U-shaped curves so they don't overgeneralize. Now, most lessons about graphing quadratic functions will include, as you might expect, lots of graphing of quadratic functions. Students usually take a quadratic equation, plot the points, and draw the curve. Equation, points, curve. Equation, point curve. But the goal of this lesson isn't to learn how to plot points. They already did that. Plus, technology can do that for them. The goal is to learn about features of parabolas and the connections between quadratic equations and their graphs. So how can we get students thinking about features and connections? One idea is to give them a curve and have them produce equations. See what we did there? You could do this with one graph and one equation at a time, or you could have students explore and generate several equations and graphs at the same time. For example, give students one parabola to start with, maybe the parent function, and have them figure out some equations for new quadratics that are related to the original in some way. Maybe find some that are wider than the original, narrower, higher, opens down. Students should pretty easily sketch curves that have these characteristics, but the real work will come in finding equations that produce the graphical results they're looking for. As they try to come up with the equations, they'll have to tinker around with the components of quadratic equations, the leading coefficient, the constant term, and anything else they want to mess around with. And as they're tinkering, they are thinking about how the equation relates to its parabola, and they can uncover the relationship between the equation and the graph. As the students are talking quadratics, you can look for opportunities to accommodate learners through rich vocabulary development. Rather than front-loading vocabulary at the beginning of the lesson, a better way is to build on student talk that comes out as they're working. They will need a way to refer to that turning point in the curve that keeps moving around, and they will have to talk about how y equals x squared is different than y equals negative x squared. This is a great opportunity for you to connect their vocabulary with more formal vocabulary. So be brave, try it out, and let us know how it goes in the comments.